Hello everyone. I want to talk to you about my um, the Force on Force class that I just came back from. It was a Saturday Sunday class and it was all day class. Um, the first day was the Saturday and it went from 9 in the morning till about 3 o'clock in the afternoon but then we came back at 7.30 at night and did a, a low light no night shoot from about 7.30 to 9.30. So, I mean, they were pretty full days. And then the second day was 9 a.m. until about 5.30. So, you know, two two complete days of, of shooting. And again, for those who don't know, Force on Force is a training exercise where you use dummy guns or airsoft guns. In this, in this case, we used airsoft guns because we were doing actual, um, you know, actual shoot scenarios. And um, basically a force attacks you and you have to respond in force. So, and, um, you know, for those who, you know, want more information on the Swords International class, you can certainly go to their website and I'll leave that down in the description and you can, you know, look at the class descriptions and stuff. I also wrote out, um, a kind of a review on the class as well and that's on my Facebook Lima Tunes page which I will leave a link to that down in the description as well. One person just asked me, you know, what's the point? I mean, why would anyone in their right mind pay to go and get shot at all day for two days? Um, and I would come back and say that just the things that you learn make up for every welt and bruise that you get. You now, when you go to your CCW class or when you try and buy a holster or when you, you know, when you read an article about the proper grip or about the, you know, whatever, you just kind of assume it's true and you're just kind of like, okay, you know, this person has a good reputation. I'll trust them, you know, for this reason or for that reason. But when you go to Force on Force, and you have to put into practice what you have been taught. You go, wow, that's why everyone tells everyone to do this or to, to have this kind of gear or to do this or to do that. Um, for instance, holsters, big one on my list. Um, if you have a crappy holster and you are put into a a life set life threatening situation and if you um you know if you reach back and find that your gun is missing because your holster dropped it when you started moving off the x you know three yards back you're screwed hands get hit a lot i've heard this before and it was just kind of like oh okay you know but i got shot in Let's see, this finger twice, you can see it here and here, and you see it's still kind of darker than my other fingers. Um, this is actually much better than it used to be. I actually had, I mean, pretty much my whole finger was purple from being shot. Um, I got shot twice in this finger. I got shot once here, once here, and once here um, for my trigger finger. And both, both my trigger finger and my ring finger are just, they still aren't, <laughs> working quite like they were. So, you know, one thing that you really have to think about is if you're shooting and you get shot, you know, or you're running and you're shooting and you get shot in your strong hand, you're going to drop your gun, you know, and you're probably going to lose the function of your hand. What's your options? Are you going to try and pick up your gun with your off hand um, while you're still running away and he's coming after you? You know, what are your options? Um, most of the time, I would say spare gun. Does that mean I'm going to go and carry two guns all the time? Probably not. Um, maybe. I don't know. I haven't really made that decision yet. But one thing is certainly, you know, for sure, is that I know for a fact now that it, when it comes to gunfights, hands do get hit a lot. And if I choose not to carry a second gun, I'm taking that, that kind of liability on myself. The other thing that was very interesting was um, movement. If you just stand there, and it's hard to think that a lot of times when we do our practice and we do our drills, we just stand there, we draw, we shoot, we draw, we shoot, if your range even lets you draw and shoot. And yeah, I understand that a lot of ranges don't allow you to run around like a madman while you're drawing and shooting. Um, 
but getting some kind of practice, even if it's just taking a dummy gun and practicing that, what Steve Collins called the explosive movement, which was basically just, you know, move, draw, shoot, um, you know, maybe to the other side, move, draw, shoot, um, you know, run those drills, run moving and shooting, because you still may get shot, but your chances of getting shot multiple times go down the faster you move. Another thing that we learned was just basically the things that that the other things that are just kind of pounded into um, carriers, like, you know, front sight, front sight, front sight, and, you know, this perfect two-handed grip, you know, all the time, and this perfect, you know, two-foot, you know, isosceles or weaver stance. Um, they go right out the window. They really do. Um, it, as far as seeing sights, I think I saw my sights a couple times. But most of the time, it was what um, Steve Collins, the instructor again, called muzzle on meat. It was basically, if your muzzle is on the meat of your target, you are going to hit it. Um, and sometimes, I didn't even see my gun, much less my sights. I would draw and shoot from retention. Um, I had to do that at least twice. And um, in one of the scenarios, I was sitting on a park bench just basically just sitting there and this was another example of sometimes you can't move off the X and you have to fight <laughs> and you have to fight from where you are um, so in this particular sense, um, instance I'm sitting on a park bench this rather large man comes walking by and just reaches out and grabs me by the throat um, so from there I just put my left hand up drew my gun right from here and just whack 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 right in the stomach but he was so close there was pretty much no way he was going, you know, I was going to miss it. But a lot of times, you know, depending on how close they were, shooting from retention instead of trying to shoot from an extended grip was a lot better, quicker, and wouldn't have to worry about someone hitting the gun off to the side. I had one instance where I was the bad guy, and it was an ATM scenario, and I came running up to this guy, and I was just like, give me your money, give me your money, and, um... You know, he just kind of froze there for a second because I was really close to him. And then he shoved my gun away and shot me. I came back and shot him twice. Um, and it was kind of like, well, we both would have been dead in that, that instance. So that was kind of an interesting one as well as far as the difference between shooting from retention, you know, here close to the body as opposed to, you know, extending. Because this can get you knocked around a lot, whereas this... They have to get even closer to try and get to your gun. I was pleasantly surprised at how many times I was actually able to get a two-handed shooting grip. They taught us kind of an interesting grip, which is called the car grip, and I can't remember what that stands for. But it's basically, if you're running um, kind of on your, if you're running the direction of your offhand, it's easy to extend out and shoot while you're running. Um, and it's not easy to get a two-handed grip because you're turning and running, so you're not going to get a two-handed grip. But if you're running the other way, it's easier to get a two-handed grip. But the problem here is that you can only go so far if you're trying to run away. But with the car grip, you come up like this, and you can get a lot further range of, of shooting. You can almost use the side of the slide as a sighting mechanism than, you know, than trying to do this. This is much more comfortable, much more, I would say, natural. If you look this way, I'm not actually close to the point where it would hit me in the chin, which is out a little bit, so that it, when it recoils, it would go past my chin. And I used that a, a few times um, while running, you know, running away the other direction, and it works really well. We also did active shooter uh, scenarios like bank takeovers, mall, um, you know, bank robberies, malls, um, that kind of stuff, like a school shooting. We did those kinds of scenarios. Um, that's where I got this one. We were using a rifle, and so that's where I got that big, huge shot. And you can see all the rest of my, uh, all the rest of my shots all the way down my arm, down here. I got two right here on my chest. Um, more on this arm several on my knees and legs and back and abdomen. I got shot every day, like two on the top of my head, which 
really hurt. Um, but, um, so you do get shot up a lot. <laughs> and not to mention all the ones on my fingers. Again, I could go on for days about all some of the other stuff that, that we learned just as far as, you know, moving, um, you know, shooting rate of hits, um, the Tuller drill, also known by some as the 21, 21 foot rule, which basically is that if someone was, is within 21 feet of you, um, they can get to you very fast. And something that I would recommend other people, you know, people to do is to learn those distances. And yes, speeds are different. You know, some people are faster than other people. That's just a given. So it's not a universal rule, but it's a good generalization. It's basically, okay, at seven yards, I have these options. At five yards, I have these options. At three, op at three yards, I have limited options. <laughs> but being able to recognize those distances is extremely helpful to the concealed carrier. And it was something that was really just kind of um, not necessarily emphasized, but something that was easily observed in the class. Um, I would strongly, strongly recommend Force on Force to anyone who was interested, um, even people who aren't interested. If one comes available, just go, see how you like it. Um, even if you hate it, even if you hate getting shot, um, it's still a great, great learning experience.